All right, good morning. Um, I am near Bowling Green, Virginia on the Mattapania River. Uh, looking for a little paddling adventure this morning. I never know, I've, this is a stretch of river I've never paddled. I don't know how many trees are down. I don't know what to expect. Uh, but I think I'm gonna probably go about 10 miles on it. Um, I've left my bike at the other end and uh, if my odometer was right, it'll be about a 6.3 mile ride back to get the car when I'm done. So this will be a one-way multi-sport trip. I'm at Nelson Landing Road, uh, just south of Bowling Green, Virginia. And I didn't know that this put-in existed and I had gone to the 207 bridge right up the road here, right up the creek, and turned around and gone back. Um, so I'm gonna put in here and I'm gonna go upstream first because I'm obsessive that way because I got do all of the river so I'm gonna go up to where I left off at 207 and then come on back down and it's probably about eight miles from here to uh, to where US 301 uh, crosses this river and I'll uh, get out there and hopefully my bike is still there waiting for me when I arrive. Uh, thunderstorms came through last night uh, dumped about three inches of rain the rivers come up about six inches uh, overnight so that ought to help getting over some scrapey logs we'll see might uh, cause low bridge situations in other places. You just never know what's going to happen, but uh, it's a great day, and uh, hopefully this will be a nice adventure. All right, it's noisy here from the traffic, but at least I can say I'm now truly picking up from where I left off. I'm happy to be going back downstream, though. That was, uh, my GPS says it was just over a mile from uh, Nelson's Landing to here. So, I'm gonna head back downstream where it's quieter. This is more like it. So I guess I decided to start by getting my upper body workout. Um, this river only falls about two and a half feet per mile through here, um, which doesn't seem like much, but the current is surprisingly brisk and, you know, it's not high water. Occasionally the uh, river will go over a shallow bar or over a fallen tree or maybe there's an island and the channel will get constrained and the current picks up significantly and uh, There's a couple of times where I was paddling for all I was worth and barely moving up through little riffles, but you know, it's moving So it's much nicer to be going downhill now um, Same thing has struck me as when I was here last time and that is how clean this river is and how quickly you feel isolated out here. Um, really no signs of civilization, which is nice. It's very quiet. I've already been chasing herons. I saw a pretty big black snake swimming across the river. Um, the water has this, uh, you know, it looks muddy, but it's actually like a tannin tea color. You stick your paddle in and you can see, you know, two, two and a half feet down pretty easily. I can see bottom right here. Um, so it's, um, yeah. It's nice, it's good to be back out here. It's hard to make the time, but definitely worth um, playing hooky from work every once in a while to do stuff like this. So, so this is the only uh, tree obstacle I've seen in this mile upstream, um, now going back down through it. And you can see uh, somebody came through with a chainsaw and cleared it out. It's been a while, so um, don't know how recent, but hopefully this will be the standard for all other potential obstacles on this trip. Here's what Nelson Landing Road put in looks like from the water. That's pretty obvious. If I were ever to start upstream again and come back to here, it's a good spot. Okay, new territory here. All right. Nelson Landing Road. Um, almost immediately after uh, going downstream of the landing back there, I had a tree to cross. Uh, it wasn't bad though, it was just slightly submerged. I was able to hit it with enough speed to just slide over it uh, with a little scooching. Um, so, but we'll, uh, we'll start the obstacle count as one. like there's a rope hanging from the tree like somebody's come out here and gone swimming oh yeah there's some steps up into this sycamore and a rope hanging down
Obstacle number two. Looks like somebody started the chainsaw exercise, but um, couldn't figure out how to finish it. That's all right, appreciate the effort. But uh, yeah, this is a good sized tree. Somebody lost a cooler and it has floated up against this tree and appears to have been sitting in that same spot for a long time. If anybody from the Caroline High School field hockey team is missing a cooler, I know where it is. Um, yeah, so this wasn't bad. I was able to just sit on the log, pull the boat over in front of me, and then get back in the boat. So, still relatively dry. Obstacle number two complete. So this is an interesting one. Um, up here is just a mess. Over there, there's actually room between the tree and the water, but not enough for me to limbo under it. Um, and it's even more awkward. It's a little, little too high to climb on top of. And even if I were to do that, there's nothing to stop the boat from just going because <laughs> the current's moving pretty good under there. So I'm not sure what's the best way to get through this. But while I sit and think about it, I will tell you, um, probably hear a train in the background um, I was trying to paddle through the area where that train was nearby because it was making a lot of noise but during that section um, I saw a muskrat sitting in the middle of the river and then he ducked down underwater when I got close um, an osprey came whipping around the corner about head height like flying up the river and saw me and went up uh, I've had a barred owl um, fly out of one of the trees on the riverbank and the barred owl seemed to have a palliated uh, woodpecker companion when the barred owl flew the woodpecker would follow him and and make an alarm call and then they landed together and then the barred owl flew again and the woodpecker flew again with him still making the alarm call it was, i don't know what was going on there it's very interesting um anyway lots of wildlife out here let me see if i can figure out how to get past this tree obstacle number three going on I'm trying to get into this boat without flipping it over okay oh okay all right that was a challenge <laughs> obstacle number three sort of committed to a one-way trip at this point all right, we're up to obstacle number six now, um, which, huh, maybe not. I wonder this channel around this island might be deep enough that I can get past all this. It's really interesting. Number four, by the way, was just straight log in the, log in the creek. I could sit on the log, pull the boat over, get back in, go. Number five was the top of a tree that I couldn't quite get around, so it was slide over a bunch of branches and pull my way through a mess. 
you, you see, you look down the river and you just see messes like this and half the time you get up to them and you can pick a way through, either limboing or over or whatever. And then sometimes like, like this, where, you know, it's a combination of can't get past this one, could go around right here, but then go around under, yeah, it's just, there's some creative navigation here. But speaking of creative, I might actually go back upstream and go around this island just just because. Let's try it. I said I wouldn't go upstream anymore, but here we go. enough water over that limb but that's okay. All right, here's where I was pulled up on the beach. So, Obstacle number six off the list. I can get around it. Only five. Sometimes the island trick doesn't work. I just went one way down and there was a tree and so I went back up and went around the other way and there was about five trees. <laughs> so I gave in and went over the first one. Fortunately it had fallen on a beach and I could go around the end of it on the, on the gravel bar. So we'll call it six now. I'm about two miles from the takeout now and uh, enjoying a relatively tree-free section for a while here now. Um, the count is up to 11. I'm gonna hit one right here. Um, yeah, I know there's a big difference between an obstacle and just misreading the river and hitting a submerged branch that I could have avoided but didn't. Um, so even if I take into you know, those errors and do a careful accounting, I have counted 11 things that I could not avoid and had to get out of the boat to some degree to get around. Um, so that's kind of tiring. Um, and my shoulders are gonna feel this, by the way. <laughs> um, it's a lovely day and it's a nice paddle. Uh, but I'm gonna go from the upper body workout on the river to the lower body workout biking all the way back uh, here in a little bit so first thing we'll see is a railroad bridge 
and then I think the takeout's about three quarters of a mile beyond that. So we'll see. I'm just about done. I can start. I'm starting to hear traffic on the highway at the bridge where the takeout is. Um, my arms are tired. My shoulders are tired. Um, I could have done with a little bit more current, as it turns out. I'm just not in shape, um, and I'm not quite done. Right? I got to change, change out a boat for a bike and get back to my car. But um, I don't want to count my chickens too early, but after I was complaining about that 11th um, obstruction, I've been probably three-ish miles without any. Now, there's been some duck unders and there's been some pretty serious S-turns all the way across the river and back to avoid trees, but I haven't had to get out. Um, and Hopefully that continues for the next half mile or so. I think that's all I've got left. Um, I did have, there's been deer um, all along the banks here, and I did have another barred owl um, sat in a branch about 20 feet up and did that little soft screech that they do and just watched me and just kept looking at me the whole time. That was really cool. I wish I had a, a telephoto lens um, for that little encounter. Uh, it happened to be right over a pretty tricky little riffle area with lots of trees in the water, so it you know, wasn't like I could even sit still and pay attention, but um, it's very neat. This whole river is beautiful. Um, you know, logs notwithstanding, uh, this is a great paddle, um, and I think most of it is the remoteness. Um, you know, I heard, in fact, there's a train whistle now. I've heard trains, there's been a couple of things on the shoreline that indicate humans, but most of it's just been like this. You just hear the birds, and um, fish jumping and not that hard to get to and very quickly just feel like you're in another world. It's really nice.
real quick view of the takeout put in from this side a little bit steep but uh, you can walk up in through here and it's fine the current is not nearly as strong down here as it was when I put in um, you know it's widening but still a nice river I'm gonna keep going at some point so now it is time to swap the boat for the bike. bike ride was much much harder <laughs> um, partly just because it's exp it was exposed the whole way out in the sun uh, six and a half miles basically up for half and then down you know away from the river and back down to it um, anyway good workout it was just under 10 river miles and six and a half road miles lower body upper body and a beautiful day on the river. Troy from Flying Squirrel. Thanks for riding along. See you next time. Later.